Hello, this is David with Helibatics.com. Today I'd like to show you a quick build of the Taro T2D 2-axis gimbal and uh, a few tricks and tips on how to initialize the gyro and a few things like that that are, are sometimes overlooked by the new user. Here is the Taro, of course, T2D. I'm going to open this up and here's everything that you get in the box. So this is the control board and the compass and camera mount. Here is your gim oh, your gimbal motors. Here's your USB programmer and the uh, wires for hooking up to your uh, receiver for pan and tilt control. And then here is the mounting frames themselves and the rubber uh, bumpers that hold it all together. And this is completely generic. It'll work with um, a DJI uh, mount or it'll also work with the tube mounts where it uses these little brackets right here with the carbon tubes on each side. And the last thing in the box is the manual of course. And this covers basically how it goes together for all of the screws and other items. So the first step is basically to put together your, your damper balls. So depending on what, what you're mounting it to, you may or may not need all these parts. These, these brackets here are if, you're, if your aircraft uses the, uh, the tube mounts. And then these two mount points here will correspond to the uh, mount points on a DJI. So it very conveniently will mount to uh, the bottom of a, of a Phantom. Alright, so here are the damper balls that will go between the plates. And then the four small screws here are used to hold the circuit board, control circuit board, to these four points here. Here and here and here and here. Uh, these long screws uh, with the nuts on them can be used to go through these holes to mount them to uh, your aircraft, whatever that might be. If you're using it, if you're mounting it to a, a DJI, I think it might be a little tiny bit bigger screw, but in any case you can still use the same hole. So that's how that works. Now make sure you get this aligned correctly. This one will go this way, such that the, the holes line up sort of in the middle of this opening on the bottom, like this, not like this. If you see this, then that is not the way you want it. You want it to be like this. All right, so in this bag, we have the camera mount, which has the uh, compass on the back right here, the compass chip, and that's connected to the controller board right here. And this wire here is for your power connection. This can be connected to an up to 4S power supply. Here you can see a close-up of the control board. And you can see the nine pins uh, right down here. These have a multitude of uses, but basically the top three pins can give you the C, T, and R uh, controls, which is uh, C for the, for the stick or raid position mode, and then the T in the center for the tilt channel, and the R for the roll channel. So those can be plugged into three conventional PWM receiver channels to control those three functions. And then in addition, you've got a the S line, which gives you an S bus input port. And then the bottom one is what they call a camera control servo output, which can be used for an infrared camera module, which I've never used. In any case, that's how you hook that up. On the board here, you can see this is where the, the uh, compass plugs into from the camera, from the back of the camera, plugs in right here. And then these ports on the bottom up here on either side of the capacitor are for your uh, your tilt and roll motors. This one here is your tilt motor connection on the top here. And this bottom one, the one next to the power connector, is your roll motor connector. The other connectors here are for the, the two that are have, that have four pins, this one here and this one here. Those two are the USB connectors for the motor driver controller and the cam and the gimbal controller. 
And then this little three pin connector right next to the uh, one that goes to the camera is for a DSM uh, series type receiver or satellite receiver. You can plug in there directly for control of the uh, camera. And then of course this is your power connector uh, which they rate as being good for up to 14.8 volts. Also included in the bag with this is this little copper uh, washer. It's about a couple of millimeters thick. Be sure you don't lose this. This is this will go on to the, the gimbal motor uh, that's in this bag here. It'll go on the shaft of this. When we put the when we put the camera mount on it, it'll put uh, it'll go between those. So next we'll go ahead and open the gimbal motors, and they will come out like this. So here we've got the the carrier all assembled with the uh, with the rubber with the rubber cushions in here, like so. This is the proper way it should look. You can see that the holes are centered when viewed from the bottom. All right, so here you can see the proper orientation, at least the way they recommended doing it in the in the uh, diagram uh, in the, on the manual. The uh, capacitor, which is this round thing right here, should go in the back next to the edge like this. So then we just locate the hole and gently screw these in. Don't tighten them up too much because it's just uh, into the plastic. You don't want, don't want to strip it out. And there we go. They're all lined up now. So we will very gently screw the rest of these in. And there it is. So I'm going to just gently snug these up. Okay. And that's how that should look. Now we're going to go ahead and put this on, like so. So again, this front, this will be the front over here. Circuit board in the back. Uh, now at this point, I would uh, recommend to go ahead and get your Loctite and Loctite these screws, just to make absolutely sure they don't vibrate loose and the thing doesn't fall off. Right, here's a thread locker I use. You can any you can use most any blue thread locker like this, which will be fairly easy to remove. Now I have a little trick I like to do when I'm thread locking things. I like to go ahead and just put it instead of putting it on the screw, I'll put it in the hole, kind of like this. This uh, this has a couple of advantages. This way I won't get the get the thread lock material on the plastic, which which it will cause it to um, kind of melt away. So I kind of get it down in the hole a little bit, and then I wipe it clean like this. And that way, the thread locker is in the hole, and I, there's no risk of me getting it on the plastic or anything as I do my installation. So here we go. I've got the thread locker in the holes, and now I just carefully find the hole with my tool here. And gently, again, very gently with this, all these the parts are plastic, except for the bracket. You know, the bracket to the motors are metal, but... Uh, the rest of it's plastic, so don't over tighten it or you'll uh, damage it. Okay, and there we'll just gently snug those up. With, as long as you've got thread lock, they don't have to be too tight because they won't be coming loose. So I'll get those snugged up like that. Okay, and there we go. So now we're getting pretty close. Now we're going to bring the camera mount portion of it down here off of the circuit board. Now this is where we're going to put the little washer that came with that part right on this shaft here. Actually before we do that we want to double check that all these little um, set screws are tight. This is what holds the motor. So what I'm going to do actually is take them out and we're gonna we're gonna put a little bit of thread lock on these to make sure they don't vibrate loose. It's always a good idea to take apart and thread lock just about anything because uh, they don't usually put any thread lock on them at the factory. So just a little bit of thread lock will go a long way here. Put this in and snug it up, and then do the same. Put the one on the other side. Take that out. Put just a little bit of thread lock on that. And put it back in. And 
and make sure you hold the motor in firmly as you do that so it's all tight in there. Alright, so now we've got both sides nice and tight. And there's a little screw over here that holds this carbon fiber plate on. Go ahead and just make sure that's snug while we're while we're at it. And then at this point the motor should spin nice and freely. It can also be removed. You can also pull the cover off of it just like that in case you want to have a look at it. Um, just be real careful when you put it back together because it'll snap together real fast and hurt your fingers if you're not careful. So there we go. Now, it, now we go ahead and put the little washer on this. And that will fit real snug down on the shaft. Push it all the way down. Push the motor all the way in. And then put the uh, camera mount on here. Okay, now you need to find, okay, so the flat spot, of course, needs to go in the back where this set screw will go. You can see it there, so I've kind of got it lined up. Again, I would recommend taking the set screw out. Be very careful you don't drop it. Put a little bit of thread lock. And then again, double check your flat spot, make sure it's reasonably well lined up, hold it all straight, and then put your set screw back in. So there we go, gently, just gently snug this down or leave it a little bit loose, and then you can rotate the motor and you'll, you'll feel that flat spot coming close to where it should be. And very gently bring it in, letting the motor kind of guide the flat spot so you're perfectly lined up with it and then then tighten down your and hold it squeeze the whole thing together so that the um, so the camera mount is pressed against the motor shaft and then go ahead and firmly tighten that up firmly but gently and there you go if you made a mess with the with this with the Loctite just gently wipe that away with a Kleenex or something and then you're basically finished with that now we just need to plug in the tilt and roll motors so here's the connector for the motor in the back, is our roll motor, therefore it's going to go to the one next to the power, which is this one, and the tilt motor will go to the other one over here next to it, there, I believe that's correct, if not we'll definitely find out when we power it up, and then kind of route these wires so that they can flex and move appropriately. Now the next step is to test it out. Of before we go any further, we've got to put a GoPro on here because it won't work unless it has the weight of the camera here to actually uh, allow it to do its job. Now, there's a little uh, screw that comes in the back of this. You can see it right here. I'm not exactly sure why they, didn't, why they include this, but you need to take this screw out. And uh, if you don't, it'll be impossible to put the camera in. So I think they put that there maybe to help you get the camera out if you need to, but that's not really a problem. Now, put this back on. Now, I'm going to plug in a 3S battery off camera here and power this up. Now, one thing to, that's very important when you power this up is it's got to be absolutely still. So, I've got it balanced so that it's not going to move. Okay, I'm going to turn it such that you can see the light back in here. So, I'm going to get it balanced. There we go. Now, as soon as it synchronize or as soon as it initializes there it'll turn blue but you notice that it had to be sitting still now if you've got this on your multi-rotor or your airplane or whatnot and you're holding it in your hand or something it's never going to initialize even if it's sitting on the ground and the wind is blowing and it's shaking it it may never initialize it's got to be pretty still uh, in order to initialize but you can clearly see now let me adjust the camera a bit you can clearly see that I can move this side to side, up and down, and the camera stays perfectly perfectly locked on. So it works just perfectly. All right. Uh, one last thing I wanted to touch on was the mounting possibilities. So as, as I mentioned before, it comes with these type of uh, mounts for the tube mounts. And if you're going to use these, these simply uh, are screwed on to the uh, top of this right here and right here with the included nut and bolts. So it will be like this and then you can hook it on to your, uh, your standard tube mount. 
Now, if you have a DJI or something like that, uh, you can use these. They're they're spaced apart, about the right distance for uh, for a DJI. This is this right here is not a DJI, but it's a DJI clone, uh, a little, little bit larger version. But as you can see, it has a pair of holes here and here that are roughly 58 millimeters apart, which uh, which matches the uh, mount on the tarot. So you can uh, you have to use a three millimeter bolt to go into this one, but you can definitely uh, uh, round these out or uh, open them up just a little bit by forcing a uh, three millimeter screw through them and mount it to the bottom of your uh, your DJI like this. And it's got the right shape, as you can see. You can see the bottom shape of it uh, is contoured to uh, work with the DJI frame. So there it is. So in summary, we have uh, a working tarot gimbal here that I've shown you how to put together. Um, a few things to mention that, that are kind of gotchas that people often uh, struggle with. One of them is the plugging in of the motors to getting them in the right, con right connectors. So your, your rear motor connects to the left plug as you look at it from the back, assuming you've put it in in the standard orientation with the capacitor on the rear. So the rear motor plugs to the left, the uh, uh, tilt motor pan plugs into the right. And don't forget when you initialize, you must be absolutely still. Uh, I didn't uh, show you, but if I, I had it sitting still earlier so it would initialize, but if you are hand holding it or if you've got it blowing in the wind, if the camera itself is moving at all for any reason, whether it's wind or whatnot, the gimbal will not initialize and that'll, that's a common problem that people experience getting it to power up correctly. So it does have to be absolutely still. If you follow those guidelines, I think you'll be doing good. You can also control the gimbal, as I mentioned, through uh, SBUS or discrete servo connections through the pins here. And I'll show you how to do that as well as uh, connecting to the USB in another video. So thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks a lot.